anything else about presence? We talked about post posture, eye contact, gestures. Please. Should you move or stay still? If you stay still, well, depends. This is a little awkward for me because I tend to be more out here a little bit more. So I'm staying here but walking around here. If you move, move. You know, but don't just kind of bounce or rock back and forth or something. Those <laughs> things are distracting. All right. If you want to move, that's fine. It's nice to leave from the podium. Yeah. Much better. What do you tend to do? Um, try, try to move, but maybe sometimes I bounce. <laughs> if you found that you bounce, be sure that you're grounded. So, okay, come up here a sec, would you? Okay, so we're going to come over here. So just give me a, I don't want to fall off the phone. Give me a good shove. Yeah, give me a good shove. Oh, no, push me hard. Okay, all right. So if I'm going to speak, and I want to, stay here a second, okay? So if I want to get louder, okay, or if I don't want to wiggle or, or move something, I need to be grounded. Especially to get a bigger voice, I really need to be grounded. And that means not just kind of, you know, I'm up here lightly, and then I can't really access breath support. So I'm going to get grounded. Now, give me a shot. Okay, different. Okay, good, thanks. Thank you. Uh, so what that means is when you get up to the podium, ground your feet. Whether you, you, you bend your knees, it doesn't matter. Get weight in your butt. So it's almost like you're into the ground. So if I have to get louder, I can. I'm not going to move. I can move with my hands, but I'm not going to do any kind of moving back and forth. Okay. Really, really important for good voice, whether seated, if you're sitting, get your butt in the chair. Just make sure you're really pushing down into that chair. You don't think it's important, but it's really, really important for voice. Okay? So get ground. All right, so I want you to start thinking about your voice. Call and leave yourself a message on the answering machine. Listen back and analyze it in terms of pitch, in terms of pausing, in terms of inflection. Many of the women, often young women that want to move up in corporate ladders, they inflect their voices upward. My name's Susan Miller. I'm coming to Washington, D.C. You know, that inflection pattern drives me nuts, drives me nuts. But women can change it. I would like a cup of coffee. We need to inflect it downward. So when you're listening to your answering machine, Kind of listen critically. What's the pitch like? Do you use ums and ers? Poor Carolyn Kennedy got destroyed for her verbal tics, didn't she? You know, but we don't need to be using those ums and ers. How many of you like the sound of your voice when you hear it on an answering machine? Okay. How many of you don't like it? Yeah, that's true of mostly everybody. Now the good news is you can change it, and the bad news is the way you sound on your answering machine is the way you sound. Okay, I mean, that's the bad news. So don't hit the person next to you, but put your hands around your, your ears, please. And let's just count, not like we're counting in unison, but just, hi, how are you? Just talk. Hi, how are you? One, two, three, four, five. Hi, how are you? This is what you sound like, all right? Because, okay, so tomorrow morning when you get up, go in the closet and put your hands around your ears and just start talking to yourself and go, okay, do I like my voice or don't I? No, I'm serious, because this is what you sound like and you can change it. So let's for a minute, we're going to do all this in the workshop, which will be fun, but let's get nasal. Just scrunch your face up. Let's get nasal. Huh, hi, how are you? Yeah, how are you? Yeah, I'm ready, can do it. Okay, so. Let's get kind of stupid. How you doing? How you doing? Well, you have to play a little bit with this, but, you know, get, you know, relax your throat. When we hear ourselves, we hear ourselves through the bones of our head, right? Then we hear ourselves from an answering machine from air conduction through our ears. So when you cup your hands around your ears, now air conduction is overriding bone. So this is really what you sound like. So that gives you hope, right? Because you can really practice and try to change it a little bit, all right? So if you want to get louder, there are some of those sounds like an S that don't vibrate. So let's everybody make a W loud, like whoa. Without the vowel. It, it can't. So if you need to get louder, let's say I'm saying four score and seven years ago, I'm not going to spend much time on because it's air. We always prolong the vowels. So if your dog's running across the street and you need to say watch out, it's watch out. Okay? So try to move. Yeah, just for kids. Watch out. So for anybody in this room that thinks you can't get louder, you can. It's about learning breath and learning how to stretch those vowels. 
And if you still, you think, oh gosh, I still have a soft volume, you can do the old ski, you know, the exercises we do before skiing. When you get down, you know, sit against the wall. One, two, three, four, five, six. That makes you use breath from down here, relax your throat, and let the sound go. Okay? This is a great way to work on getting louder. And then when your knees give out, like right now, you can just put your shoulders against the door, against the door or a wall, and talk like this. Because our tendency is when we present and we get nervous, we take that shallow, sucky breath. You know, it's up. And our throat, our pharynx constricts and our tongue pulls back. All right, and then the pitch gets tight. Then our pitch gets higher and the throat gets tight. So really think about when you're talking, letting that breath come from below and relaxing your throat. All right? All right. And you have to articulate. I've been talking fast today, faster than normal, because I have a lot I want to cover. So one thing that will help to slow me down is saying the ends of words. And if I'm saying something such as, Oh, I'm going to see a radiation oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Okay, I want to say all the syllables. Radiation oncologist. In Washington, we say government. You know, it's two syllables. No, it's government. You know, it's Memorial Sloan Kettering. It's not Memorial Sloan Kettering. You know, you want to be thinking when you're listening to that answering machine message, do you articulate clearly? I promise you won't be too slow and you won't be like this. Slowing down can help say the ends of words and be sure and say the last word. My name is Susan Miller. Okay, not my name is Susan Miller. What? What's the end of that? More? No. Miller. No. My name is Kay Park. You know, put the K on the end of that. Okay? It's really important. First, the other thing you can do to get your breath going are lip flutters. I know it's bizarre. I know, but you know, Kay didn't know this. I went in the restroom before, because I got off the train, I came running in here and I was like, I know it's stupid, but you know, it gets your voice going. If you can't lip flutter, then tongue trail. And if you can't do that, all New Yorkers can do raspberries, right? Because that's the Bronx cheer. Right? So those are all things that get the breath going. Humming gets the sound up here and drink some water. If your mouth gets dry, you can bite the tip of your tongue with your back teeth. Okay? That always brings you saliva. And it's better than water, really. Okay, so warming up your voice, water before caffeine. Tongue twisters are good. Can everybody say red leather, yellow leather? Give it a shot. Red leather, yellow leather, get faster. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Okay, so those are things you can do also because we never think about warming up our tongue before we speak, but we have to. It's a strong muscle. 11 benevolent elephants, anybody? 11 benevolent elephants, 11 benevolent elephants. Good, good, good. good. I don't know what, what it, autonomic nervous symptoms you display, but you always want to have some before you present. So for some people, whose mouth gets dry in here? Anybody? Okay. Anybody's voice tremor or the leg shake or something? Okay. Yeah. Anybody get a rapid heartbeat? No. Perspiration? Okay. Those are all autonomic signs, as you know, and, and I welcome those. If my mouth doesn't get dry or if my nose doesn't run, I always have Kleenex. If it doesn't run, then I'm not ready. My adrenaline isn't going for a presentation. It's the overinterpretation of that. So welcome your arousal, you know, really. And, and there's some things you can do about that. One, if your mouth gets dry, try this, really. Pull the tip of your tongue back and bite the tip of your tongue with your back teeth. Hard. Okay. It should bring you saliva. No? Did it for anybody? If it doesn't, you're not biting hard enough. 